Welcome back to Downstairs and Dragons, where we play D&D in our basement as per tradition. This is episode 43 of Lost and Finders, where we've been in the Shrine of Tomochan from Tales of the Awning Portal. Of course, we've reflavored it to being Starfalls, a lost elven city. Our friends, last episode, found what we think is the boss room and went, nope, and backed up. <laughs> so it looks like they're going to go through the rest of the dungeon. Let's get started. We have Dieter playing Kieran, we have Josh playing Ixeldor, and we have Adler playing Phlebotomus. So, you guys, I have you in room 53, which is literally down the stairs from the boss room. You okay? And you, what? Oh, I thought you were uh, coughing a little bit there. No. Okay. So, when you guys first went up this way, you had to pass a mummy centaur that was guarding the way. You convinced him that you were going to go talk to Zatzilaha as the Lord of Snails. <laughs> but as you kept picking at him and picking at him, he started to turn on you. And you left. Now you have to go back through that room mm. where you can only guess how you'll be received. So what would you like to do next? I feel like we're not going to be received too well. I feel like we should probably drop the Lord of Snails bit and just go in guns blazing. I, I, I would agree with that. I Seems like a good plan, yeah. Right. So we get the jump on him. Right, I'll go in first and you just stick him over my shoulder. Aye. So you leave the area 53. Oh, didn't you leave a big, you left a big pit, remember? You turned the wheel and you hit the crank, so there's actually a big 10 foot by 10 foot pit in your way. Well, that's easy, just, I'll just... Hold on, hold on, I think I got this. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I use my staff, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've got that ability. Mm -hmm. I'm going to direct my bees. And a little swarm of bees heads out. And? What, what, how do I do it? What, what's what? the mechanism? You have to undo the crank. I wasn't paying attention. You have to take the crank and you have to lift it up. That'll unlock. All right. Whoop. You see all the bees <laughs> push as hard as they can? And it's more than five pounds. 10 pounds. Oh. Hey, Jan, it's 10 pounds. Okay, well then they, whoop, the <laughs> bees push the crank. And now you want them to turn the wheel? That might be more than 10. They're trying. They're very slowly. You see the bees on the wheel cranking yep, that's it. Right. Did it. And you hear bzzz. <laughs> very slowly the pit closes, but so does the portcullis behind you. No, wait, no, you. Didn't you? We, no. no, we wedged no. the portcullis open, or did we? No, you we said were not going to, do to that but we ended not doing it. No. So, the bees can now work as mage hand. However, if you put them in a trap, they will be killed. They will be killed? Yes. Yeah. But your bees can now, as a group, as a hive, pick up things. Just like Mage Handler. Right. So you guys want to go forward? Yes, let's go. Now you leave this arrow. And you go through your dug dirt tunnel to arrive back at the hallway with the wind. So in front of you is a room that is a very strong wind gust, a big whirlwind that's blasting at the floor. I'll call the bees back and let me stuff. Oh, that's still going, is it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, you know, maybe if we just crawl across on the floor, it won't be as bad. That could work. And I'm gonna try and just push myself down against the floor and just crawl across on my belly. I'll lower myself down onto my shield and I'll slide across, push myself I need you all to roll strength saving throws to try to crawl with the wind blowing at your back. I got a natural 20. That's cool. Whoa! <laughs> Wait, are you within? Or you got a natural 20. 11. 28. <laughs> oh, wait, are you within 10 feet of me? I add 4. Oh, 15. Yay. You're all able to crawl with your backs being blasted, your hair being pushed in front of your face, your beard up in your mouth um, <laughs> as you crawl across the space as the wind is beating down on you. Okay. So you pass that challenge. Okay. And you go forward. Now, is it is it the trap door that creates it or is there something out there that's making the wind? 
But I don't think we... Did we ever get a good look up the trap door? I didn't. It's just a wall. Oh, and there, so it's just a trap. It's a oh, fake it's... trap door, then. It's a portal to the elemental plane of wind. Hmm. What if we steal it? Mm. Steal the trap door? Aye. I don't think... If we got a crowbar, and if we, like, glued ourselves to the floor so it didn't blow us about, I think it would be quite possible. Is it the trap door itself that's the trap? Oh, don't get me. I'm not we the You just have trap. to steal the doorway. Are you sure about that? Oh, I'm positive. I have no intention of doing it because... How about we soul. table that? And come back to it after we're done dealing with the other nasties in this place, eh? You know, I have no real desire to come back to it, so let's just plain table it. Very well. Can we, like, use it for anything? I mean, we're collecting so many interesting things. The hard part is closing it, because the latch is broken, so you'll see that it's just blowing all about and never going to close ever again. We can bury it in okay. your hat. Oh, I thought you were going to do Mother Earth. Well, in, inside the, <laughs> your hat room thing. You know, that could provide some fresh, some, some badly needed fresh air in there. Oh, that's a good point. All right. You know, let's let's not table it for good. Let's just table it for now. All right. We'll have to come back this way anyway. I think you <laughs> drastically misunderstand the phrase tabling it. What? You put it on the table so you can deal with it, right? Yeah, that's right. No. <laughs> Do you right? Uh, let's just take care of it. Oh, okay. All right. What are we doing? Uh, we're, you're going to take a crowbar, climb back up those steps. Um, I'll crawl over there and give you a shoulder. I'll provide moral support from way over here. Oh no, he's going to hold on to you. Oh. He's going to carry you and lift you up once he gets up there, oh. and you're going to. Uh, I'll take it apart. I see. That's a good plan. Let's do it. Oh, oh god. Okay. Uh, some Something tells me this isn't going to work, but I'm willing to go ahead and give it a try. Why not? <laughs> That's the spirit. We're going to try to steal the trap door. Please roll strength to climb the ladder while the wind is blowing you about. I'm helping you. If you're within range of helping, you have to roll your own strength to not be not prone. All right. I rolled the same number twice, so we don't want to help. Well, never mind then. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll stand over here then. 24. Okay, you're able to climb what's left of the ladder rungs to get up there. And you're hanging up above everybody. Um, and you're, you're able to see the, the hatch waving about and slamming into the ceiling and the wind is blowing <laughs> your face. And you're... Um, cloak of displacement is like <laughs> it's like flapping like a, a flag that wants to be pulled in from a storm. Now see if you can hold that closed and I'll try and pry it off its hinges. Okay. I will hold it closed. Roll new strengths. Give me guidance. 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 25. I thought that was only skill checks, not saving throws. It's not a saving throw, it's a skill check. Oh, okay. You are able to... And you hold it shut and you can hear the, the wind just pounding against it. Okay. But I also want to tell you, you're getting a really good look at it right now. Mm -hmm. There's only about an inch of space between the door shutting and the ceiling. It's like a big, like a foot by foot inch of space behind the trap door. Okay. There's not mean, a lot of space over there to do what I, what I think you want to do. No. It's enough for a crowbar. Okay. I'm you can gonna try. Climb up there with my crowbar onto Ixeldor's shoulders. Okay, Rose. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. And I'm gonna try and, um. I'm gonna try and pry the whole mechanism off of its hinges. Um. If you're gonna use a crowbar, you'll have to roll strength, but if you want to use your tinker's tools. Yeah, let me use my tinker's tools. Yeah, roll that instead. Alright. And then you're disassembling rather than ripping it out. Yep. Yes, exactly. Okay, so that is 12 plus my proficiency doubled. So that is going to be 18. You're able to disassemble it 
And Exeldor has to keep it shut while the screws are flowing away and the hinges drop to the ground. Oh, oh, I'll catch it. Holding the door there. What do you want to do next? Um, okay. I think if you want to hold open the portable hole, we'll just drop everything into there. All right, drop it down. All right, and I let it go. Okay. 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 The door goes... Bam! Into the ground, and the wind fills the room. Everyone within range, please roll strength. Saving throw to not be knocked prone. You're within 10 feet, add 4. Okay. 10. 28. 19. Kieran, you're standing there, and, poof, and you <laughs> get thrown back down onto the ground. You are flattened. I'm, I'm going to hold on to the edge that's created by the portable hole just to... Maintain all the positioning. items in the portable hall are being <laughs> all shuffled together and blown about, and the doors are. <laughs> um, wh- what are you gonna do next? Uh, I told you this wasn't going to work. You were supposed to get the door frame and the door. Yes, the door frame is stone. It is the ceiling. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> can you figure out what it is that's causing this? I do an arcana check to, uh... Yeah. yeah. Do you want the door back? <laughs> um, it might be a little late for that. That sounds like quit and talk. <laughs> uh, that is gonna be... 22. It could be a number of things. Um, it could have been, like, a glyph of warding that when you open the door, summoned gust of wind or something. But you also noticed, as you've been going through these ruins, that a lot of the walls and the bricks themselves are enchanted. So you think that the brick of the ceiling is what's enchanted. Okay, the ceiling brick is enchanted with wind. Ixeldor, do you think you'd use the butt end of your pole arm to like and the get brick it up is there like... so it falls down? I could use mold earth. <laughs> can you centralize it like that just to move this single brick? Yes, I can actually. Okay, that's our best shot here. Alright, okay, hold on. So, there are stones that create an archway. And then, above those stones that create the archway, there's more stones. So this stone that you're trying to pull out is like... Yeah, this is the way you're putting it. So there's like this big gap like this. This is the stone you're trying to get out. It's bigger than the frame. You'd have to bust the frame out to get the stone behind it to push through. Would Mold Earth do that for us? Yeah, but you risk caving in the whole room. Uh, how old are you at stonemasonry? Oh, God. You do have stone cutting tools. I do have those. I have some efficiency in those. So you just have to do it while you're being blasted by wind, and you'd have to cut away some of the stones to release the one above it. If you can direct me, I can use mold earth. Okay. I'll, you, you just point, and I'll, I'll make a cut. What would that be? Stone cutting plus intelligence? Plus proficiency, if you let your tools talk. Yeah, okay. And I'll give you advantage. Yeah, sounds good. All right, your tools are able to help you. Um, there are several chisels and several grout cutting tools that um, tell you they tell you where it's safe to cut, but they also tell you you will have a fraction of a second at the last moment to get out of here. <laughs> that sounds about right. You know, do we really want to do this? How we feel I've been happens. being blasted by wind for the past five <laughs> minutes while we've been <laughs> contemplating this. I can use mold earth at the last second to keep it where it is. Okay. After that, I have no idea what's going to happen. <laughs> we may not be able to get back into this room. Well, we'll figure something out. You know, let's is, is this really important? <laughs> it's, it's an infinite s- tornado generator. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's all that important, but we've well, come this far, you know? <laughs> okay, are we all okay. in? Okay. How are we feeling about this? Oh, uh, I am so on, I am, I am leaning off the fence, but okay. I want, um, I'm going to do multiple checks here. Okay. I want you to go ahead and do the stone cutting check. So that's in plus my proficiency doubled, yes. yes. Just your proficiency. Okay. So okay. proficiency doubled. Okay. No. At advantage. Well, wait, I have my... Ink plus prof. Wait, wait, I'm confused. Because of my six-level thing, whenever I roll with posi- proficiency bonus, is doubled and it's used... I thought bonus. it was whenever you're proficient with an item, mm-hmm. you double it. 
Yeah. You're not proficient with stone cutting tools. Oh, I'm not. Okay. I don't think so. No, you're right, I'm not. So you're only getting the proficiency bonus from the tools talking you through it. Okay. That's fine. I'm sorry. No, that's good. But Um, you go on advantage. Okay. I'm I'm assisting. (laughs) No. Oh. You're rolling Arcana to control your spell. How about religion? Since it's divine magic. Okay. Fine. Right. You spoiled brat. (laughs) So am I doing it at advantage or no? Yes. Yes, okay. The first one was a 19. So. 26. Okay. You're able to cut away at the stones and you can bury and you do it quite quickly and you can search them and a few of them fall and the big one is slowly sliding out. 19. You're able to grab the stones um, long enough to get Phlebotomus out of there. Um, are you just leaving the room? Oh, I'm diving out of there. I'm heading towards the centaur room. And now the whole room is <laughs> crumbling and shaking. Even Look outside, up the stone? you can only yeah, you can only do a five foot space. So all around you, it's crumbling and falling. And <laughs> what are you gonna do? I'm gonna grab the portable hole and uh, try and stabilize what's above me as I move backwards. I thought you were gonna put the brick in in the portable hole. Right. You haven't done that yet. Oh, well, that's what I do. So you're going to let it drop? I'm going to let it drop, grab the sheet, and run. Okay, roll a dex for me. Dex save. Save. All right. So then, yep. Um, Am I there, too? You're in the hallway hiding. Okay. Yeah, so it... Do you give me a bonus to dex? If you're, yeah, if you're within 10 feet of me, you get plus 4. Plus 4. Because right. of your religion check, you're able to <laughs> um, keep the border up while the middle drops out, and then you grab the portable hole, you run, and the whole thing falls 27. You're able to duck out of there, and you guys see this room, the center of the room, completely collapse. So instead of this hallway, this middle 2x3 is just all rubble. Which leads me to a different background, actually, because I expected you guys to do this. (laughs) That means she expected a way out. Yeah, there you go. There you go. There's your uh, (laughs) collapsed tunnel, and you guys back up as it... Well, sound around you. We did it. You can dig us out of this, right? Sure. That's not going to make it worse for us, is it? I have no idea. Wonderful. Now, with my belt of dwarf stone dwarf cunning. Do you get stone cunning? Do I? I think I might. I'd have to check. I think you don't. I think I don't. I'd have to check. But the important thing is, I'm a dwarf now. And what that <laughs> means is, we'll be able to get through this. I'm worried. (laughs) Let's deal with the centaur. Okay. You guys head back to the room with the big jade wall blocking the door. So you're going to have to get around this jade wall. Oh no, you laid it down, didn't you? Where the jade wall is now laid down flat on the ground. Is Um, that right? Yes. Yeah, because we started running away from the centaur. I thought we propped it back up. We did prop it back up over the door. So it's loosely laid in the doorway. Yes. So the caltrops that we laid down, do they look like they have anything on them, like any centaur blood? No. I'm going to grab them back up and put them in my bag then. You pick up all your caltrops. Now you have to get back through this door, so you'd have to move the jade wall if you want to roll strength. Athletics. Now we ready? Guidance. I'm going to move this wall, and then we're going to go fuck his shit up. Hmm. I mean, can we try to do it? I suppose there's no real quiet way to do it, is there? It's a very loud instrument. You know what? I'll cast pass with that chase. Okay. I'll do that. Can I use as much of my strength as I can focus to pick up this this jade door and move it out of the way instead of just letting it slam against the door? So it's a wall that has a curved base. It's made to fall over. Damn. So, but it's also made to lean. So you could rotate it, potentially. I could cast mm-hmm. Enhance Appeal. Do I have that prepared? Let me check to see if I have that prepared real quick. So I could cast... How big is it? 10 foot by 7 10? by 7 foot. Yeah, it's pretty big. I don't think I can get, like, on either side of it and, like, grab it. No. no. This thing, yeah, I either tip it on its side. Like, you lay it flat, or yeah. you move it. Or I move it. If I have you... an idea. Hmm? What's your idea? We put it in the portable hole. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of surprised we didn't do that to begin with. 
Honestly, it was really itching at the back of the mind. A sheet of jade like this would sell for so much money. Lay it down. We're taking it. Okay. (laughs) 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 Yeah, I'll just go. Wait, what if we use that? Let's move the jade and then stick the stone in the middle and just let the centaur get blown around a bit. (laughs) He'll be so disoriented he won't know what to do. Then we'll put it back in the portable hole and kick the shit out of it. Wait, that's perfect. That sounds good to me. That's oh wonderful. This is the most D and D thing I think you've ever done. Okay, so you guys use Mold Earth to lay the jade in the portable hole while also mm-hmm. making it so you, the the big blasty gust rock is mm-hmm. accessible. And then your plan is to open the door and put the gust rock in the room. Yep. <laughs> One, two, three, go. <laughs> oh my god. You couldn't have planned for this. <laughs> Uh, okay. We're using this thing as a weapon now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. Was this supposed to be a trap? No, it's ours now. <laughs> oh God! All the gems and shit are gonna be blowing around. We took all of it. <laughs> Not all of it, didn't we? All of the stuff worth worth yes, anything. Oh shit! There's a lot of uh, shit costume jewelry. Except for the beads you left everywhere. <laughs> 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 Those are going to be dust real soon. You guys open the door mm-hmm. and put the rock in and you shut the door and you're... <laughs> <laughs> what are you, even his stats? I cast Shillelagh. Oh my god. Um, I assume he's got the same stats as... A no, mummy. it's in Appendix B. Oh. I have to roll his strength. Centaur. I feel like... He <laughs> went his headdress. Maybe, maybe I want to say this. You hear a big woof as something gets the side <laughs> And then you hear the clopping of the hooves as he resettles himself and tries to get closer to the stone. And then you hear the door open I and attack. you see it. Yeah, I do. Okay, roll your attacks. Wow! <laughs> you guys all have ready to attack, so then we'll do the thing. <laughs> if it's an emergency, we can stop the okay. Yeah, if you could just pause it real quick. Okay, we'll be back in just a second. <laughs> okay, we're back. So you guys have ready to tax. Who wants to go first? I can, I can do it. Oh, that's nice. Um, 24. 24 to hit? I Absolutely. You're probably going to hit him right in the fleshy parts in the middle. Go ahead and do damage. As he opens up... What are you hitting him with? With my staff. Okay. As he opens up the door, peeks his head out. Uh, I'm going to strike at his wrists. Ooh. Since he's holding on to that spear. Okay. Are you trying also, to do a disarm? No, I'm just going to try and break his arm. <laughs> wow. Okay. Little <laughs> okay, okay. well, demon. Right. Well, does Shillelagh scale? I don't know. I don't know. Nope. Alright. D- die 8. Alright. So that's 6 plus 5. Alright. 11 points of bludgeoning damage. Mm-hmm. Anything else? Uh, that's all I do for my You hear the crunch as it goes right into the wrist. And you can see that they broke. But being undead, Doesn't even with the sinew, just barely hanging on, the hands are staying in place, holding on to the item. Mm-hmm. As it comes out and glares at you, who's next? And I got an 18 to hit. Hits? I'll throw a first level Divine Smite into it, sure. Really? Yeah. Okay, so you're Halberd, you're going through the doorway, and damage? Um. Very good. 16 slashing. Jeez. 3 acid. Seven radiant. Sorry, I'm checking what damage vulnerabilities there are. Okay. Um so that was a lot of damage. So that was a lot you, of damage. were you going for the head or the neck or the chest? Um probably the biggest target. I'd probably be in for the chest. Okay, so you flip around and you stab into the chest and you see the radiant and you see the acid leave a gush in the ribs. Um, but it's still standing, still breathing, and... Okay. I have another attack. Okay, go ahead. Uh, natural one. <laughs> Roll up, Ed. 
17. Okay, you just strike at the door as you try to swing back, and you go, and it just can't. So help him, right? Yeah. All right, so the hook probably catches on the door. Yeah. Anything else? Mm, nope, that was my whole action. Okay. Um, I am going to hit it with Shock and Grasp. Um, so that is going to be a... Awesome, so a little guy runs up, jumps up and tries to grab him. Um, what's the damage on that? It's 2 d so that is going to be... Uh, 15 lightning damage. Okay. And he can't take reactions now. Okay, so you see the lightning go up through the bones and crack a bunch of them, um, burning some of the flesh away, but still standing, um, getting ready to get back up and climb through the door. Let's roll initiative. Oh. Oh, that's not bad. Shit. <laughs> Try. <laughs> Another one. Above a 20. Above a 15. 17. 16. Dirty 20. Okay, Phlebotomus, it is your turn. You're standing underneath this thing and you just shocking grasped it. What's next? You know what? I'm going to go for another shocking grasp. Okay, and you come in, um, you grab the next set of bottles and you splash them over your hands and go back up? Yeah, I just rub them on my hands really quick like a defibrillator. I go zzz. Okay, <laughs> uh, roll your hit. Oh boy. Um, it's 12 hit. No, and it's this time that it slams its hooks down in front of you. Sorry, I always do that way too loud. <laughs> and um, almost makes you jolt your hands back as not to get stepped on, so you do miss in between the legs. Mm -hmm. um, anything else for your turn? Um, yeah, as a bonus action, I am going to have Blood Jr. Who's buzzing up above you guys? Yeah, he's just darting back and forth. He's going to do his acid spit at the horrible dude. Okay. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Do you want to roll the hit? Or is it a... Is it a <coughs> no, it's roll the hit. Um, oh, that's not going to hit. That's a nine. Oh. Acid goes flying back into the room, hits the stone, melts some of the beads that are flying around <laughs> in the wind tunnel. You guys are ducking as beads are getting thrown out the door. It's the door. It is your turn. Hey, DM. Hmm. Why did trip him? Is the wind going to push him back toward the wall again? <laughs> the wind? So he's above the stone, mm -hmm. so it would knock him up. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. <laughs> what would a trip be? Is it like a... Uh, there's some rules for it in the DMG, isn't it? Uh. Um, I would probably just do a pose, like a, do it like a grapple, and then if he fails, he loses. Okay, go ahead and roll that. We're all munching and grunting. 21. Oh, and then I go, I got a natural 20. Mm -hmm. You try to scoop out the legs with the hook of your halberd, and it stomps down and kicks um, up as he's starting to crawl through the door. Oh, yep. Bonus action? Um... I did make an attack with the halberd, so I can't attack again, but... Um, since I leveled up and changed my fighting style, I used my bonus action to go into a defensive stance mm -hmm. for my, for tunnel fighter. Okay. So if he moves within five feet, of, er, while he's five feet of me, if he moves into a different five-foot square, I get an attack of opportunity. Ooh, okay. Mm. Okay, awesome. Sounds good. <coughs> Anything else? No. Kieran, it's your turn. All right, so uh, it's based off of uh, Show of a Creature, Player's Handbook 195, um, which is essentially grapple. Okay, go ahead. So, my turn. Um, I can give this back to you. What you doing, Kieran? Uh, ha you standing Has it been it. its turn yet? No. All right, so... And it's not prone anymore, right? No. Boy, right, um... Well, I, there's no way I'm going to be able to shape it, so I'll just attack it. Um... 18 to hit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this. 
Um, seven points of bludgeoning damage. You're able to come around and smack at its jaw, possibly? under. No, I'm going to start whacking at its knees. <laughs> <laughs> whacking at its knees, and um, you said the six? Aye. Okay. Um, you do see that the knees are breaking and starting to wobble out, but because he's holding onto the door frame, he hasn't fallen yet. Anything else? I think that'll do it. Okay, it is its turn. It's going to climb through, um, but there's really no space for him to stand because you guys are taking the spaces. So he's going to start trying to kick at you guys. Okay. Does he move at least one five foot square? It's probably like he's half because he's large. He's he's his butt's in one and his head his front's in the other. Okay. And then if you're standing in front of him, yeah, well, he, yeah, be, he came be. closer. It's yeah, attack of opportunity. Yeah. Okay. Oh, very bad. Thirteen. Thirteen hits. Oh wow, really? really? Yeah. So he, oh, he crawls out and takes a stance, and you're able to get right between the legs up into the chest. Uh, not great. Eight slashing, four acid. Okay. You do make another big gash, leaving a big X of acid damage right in its chest, uh, but is still standing and coming out at you. Uh, because of these attacks, it's going to come at you um, with its hooves first, and then... Um, first hoof... I don't think he can attack you with the hooves. He came within five feet. Oh, he did. Okay, all right. Yeah, that's what got the uh, attack of opportunity. 21 to hit? Yeah, it hits. So one hoof goes through, um... Whoa! I'm sorry. This is the bludgeoning damage. Um, 11 points of bludgeoning damage mm, as he kicks you. Um, actually, right in the organs, right above your hip bone. And then... Holy fuck. Um... And then as you're struck, you realize darkness went poof, into your body through the armor. 13 points of necrotic damage seized no. through your organs and it, it stings. That really hurts. Yeah, in, pe- in places hard. that you're not used to feeling pain. Um, you need to do a constitution... Con- consti- <laughs> constipation. constipation check. Constitution check. See if you get your shit pushed in. 11. Ooh, you feel like it almost feels like you're bleeding on the inside. Oh, that's oh, but really not good. But it's it's something that yeah, you feel like you're bleeding on the inside, but it's more magical than that. It's like the necrotic damage is eating away at the inside of you, and you feel it's going to do more damage over time. Okay. You didn't need those organs anyway. Fine. Oh shit. Okay. Um. This time he only gets one attack. No, it's oh, multi attack. Oh. This one, um, 12 to hit. We'll miss. The one strikes and it makes you flinch to the side and it causes the second hoof to miss, but now comes a pike attack at you. Oh, okay. Don't start a pike. 23. Yeah, mm. yeah, we'll hit. Five Nine points of piercing damage as he strikes in your shoulder right under your clavicle to try to push you down. Um, And that's all for his turn. That's all. Anything unusual about that pike? Sparking motes of energy or anything like that? No, actually the pike is really plain compared to the hose. (laughs) Um... You think that it's just very, very, very old. It's got, and you can see it in the picture. It's got decorations and beads from an area not around here. Mm. Matches the armor and the headdress and the pieces. Okay. Uh, top of the round, full bottom, as it is your turn. All right. Mm. Oh, I, I do apologize. It takes six points of B damage. S- plus one, seven. Seven points of B damage at the top of its ten. I keep forgetting about it. The bees sting away at the sinew that's left on the body, um, breaking apart pieces, and one hand actually does fall to the ground and writhe. And um, Ew. the stingers are going into the tendons of the throat, and the head hangs crooked. You see, if you're doing tons of damage, there's barely anything left of this thing. Um, 
before I take my turn, I have a quick rules question. Okay. So it's saying this this whole thing is a reaction. So does that mean if Blood Jimmy gets an attack of opportunity or whatever, or has a reaction, I can cast Shock and Grasp through him? What is spell you cast at the range? Or is it just when I cast so a spell? What's it saying that you can use the reaction for? Channel magic. Yeah. The homunculus delivers a spell oh. you cast that has a range of touch. The homunculus must be within 120. It can use its reaction for you to cast a spell against okay. yeah, against a creature that would normally provoke an attack of opportunity from the homunculus. Okay. And that wouldn't use like my attack. It would not. It would okay. use it would use the homunculus's reaction. That's pretty nice. Okay. okay. With that said, I am going to. Well, you said it's pretty much beaten up, so I wouldn't want to waste a spell slot on it. I'm just going to cast Shocking Grasp again. Okay. That is going to be dirty 20. Okay. Do your damage. Alrighty. And that is going to be 7 points of lightning damage. Okay. How do you want to do this? Okay, so I'm going to just douse my hands in that blue electric goop, and I'm going to dive in, grab its ankles, and just hold on and shock until the thing all stops the way up moving. Head. And you see the electricity arcing between the different metal pieces of jewelry and all the way up into the head where it actually shoots the head down and it rolls across the ground and the rest of its body twitches and falls. And then <laughs> the wind away. goes brrr, and the head goes brrr, <laughs> behind you guys down the hallway. <laughs> Look at that! And that's it. It is, um, it is done. Fucking ow. Okay, I'm gonna wipe my hands off on Ixeldor's legs. What? Get away from me! It's gross! I don't care! <laughs> What's it taste like? Uh. Oh, of, course, of course you would. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> Maybe I can work with that. Uh, let's, let's, take, let's give you a look over. I'll shut the door. Okay. Put the, put the stone back yeah, in the hole. I'm gonna pick well, the stone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. The stone, you sure. mold earth it back in and close it. The wind has died down now. Okay. You got, like, a cloud of nasty that went up your nose or something there. Uh, it more went square in the chest. I'm going to use a medicine check. Hey, yeah, I'm going to aid you on that. All right. Medicine. There we go. There, my stomach's killing me. Uh, 13. Um, you guys can kind of still oh. see a cloud of... You are assisting? Yes, I am. Oh, that's much better. 21. You're able to still see a cloud of necrotic shadows kind of seeping in and out around the wound. Do um, you think that this is some kind of curse that's latched itself onto the place where it's struck? And um, while you can heal it, it will continue to fester and um, necrotize. Well, let's, um, let's get in the room. I, I, think, I think my bees are ready. I'll show you something here. There's a table in there, right? Yeah, that uh, big platform that it was standing on. Okay, I'm going to take off the uh, reciprocating beehive. Okay. Sling it around and set it down on the table. And then I'll take a little wrench, stick it in, and turn it. And you hear a crack. And then I grab the spigot that was on the side of it and stick it in. Take out a jar. This will take us some time. But now, I'll just put the jar on the floor. <sighs> Take about 10 minutes, I think, to get all the honey I need. You guys want to do a short rest? Yeah, sure. That would be nice. Do so you guys take a short rest in this room? Where it's just a fucking mess now. Um, the beads are still rolling across the floor. And the honey is gently oozing out and filling the jar. And after a while, uh, take a peek in through some of the holes gauge. Listen to the bees tell me when uh, I've taken the off. Mm -hmm. Then I'll uh, seal it up, plug it back up, lick the spigot. It's it. The honey, by the way, glows a golden hue, like an aura. Put the spigot back in. Put the wrench back in my pocket. And uh, here, take a swig of that. Well, pure honey. A portion of it. Pinky. Well, it's. I will expend five points of the honey pool to cast Lesser Restoration on him. Okay. It tastes 
It tastes like honey, yes, but it glows like it was almost a warm honey cider or something that just fills you. And there's all like over. a like a pop rock sensation on your tongue on the inside of your mouth. That's quite good. Well, your lesser restoration. I don't. I don't roll it. It just. Uh, it just happens. Doesn't um, that heal for a certain amount? It doesn't heal damage. It heals conditions. I'm hoping this will work. Does it heal curses? Curse? No. Uh, blinded, deafened, paralyzed, or poisoned. Unfortunately, you still see the necrotic shadow around your wound. Can you do remove curse? Ah, uh, I cannot do that. That's a uh, higher circle of magic than I have access to right now. Okay, that's no good. So you guys take a short rest. Did anyone use any hit dice or anything? I didn't. I'm gonna have to. Okay. Uh, just take more of the honey. <laughs> how much more do you want to give me? Uh, how much do you need? I've got. Well, I'm a, on a scale of one to fifty-seven. I'm a ten. Then take the remainder. T- uh, remaining twenty-five. Okay. Twenty-five. I. Oh. Okay. Uh, so heal twenty-five yeah, hit points. Uh, and then I'll use. Wait a minute. What does command hands do? Can that neutralize? We know for a hundred percent fact it's a it's a curse, and not a disease. Correct. Mm-hmm. Okay. Second Wait, the third level. Wait a minute. Then I'm going to go ahead and pump. 22 points of my own lay on hands into myself to bring me back to 57. Okay. Apparently, remove curse is not a druid spell. Oh. It is a wizard spell. Uh, I could probably end up. It's a third level spell. Yeah. Let me see if it's in my spell list. You guys are sitting there all fussing about Ixeldor trying to read your own manuals, read your own things, and figure out what you can do. Can you cast no. third level paladin spells? I cannot. Mm. It's not in my spell list, but I can. The revivify is a third level spell for me, so if you die from it, <laughs> and I can cast third level spells. Oh, that's reassuring. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me you have that prepared. Oh, I can't do third level spells yet. Hurry. <sighs> okay. Well, we'll have to deal with it later. Okay. You guys are done with your short rest. Are you ready to leave this room? I. Okay. Before we go, um, I'm going to track down the centaur's head. And yeah. Is his headdress still there? Yeah. Okay. You grabbing it? Yeah, I'm grabbing it and I'm bringing it to Kieran. Okay. You bring it to Kieran. Hmm. An instrument of your office, my good archduet. I do like the hue of the feathers. It's very, very festive. Resplendent. Magnificent, even. It's a bad day. Just dust it off. Poof, 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 poof. I think there's a little bit of brain left in the top of it. Just to use your uh, druid craft to clean it, huh? Mm-mm. That's no. not really what that's used for. No. But druids were dirty people anyway. I'll pop it on. I can't fault you for that. Big Dumb headdress on your head. <laughs> it fit in your staff when you turn your head. <laughs> I am Kieran Orgyle Flanagan, and I am the Arch Druid. <laughs> you guys head back through to the room with the where the water weird was, where the fountain the dry fountain is, and where the brazier was that you took and the pool okay. in the ground. Okay. Well, um I'm trying to remember this place mentally. Do we want to go back through the hole? I mm-hmm. that? yeah. Okay. Do you remember what was in the hole? A spider. <clears throat> a large spider. So you lit a bunch of stuff on fire. Which I used to doubt. Mm-hmm. So I'll go first. I'll keep my shield up. Um, take the dodge action while I move. Okay. Um, you head first in. You've got the dodge action. You're going forward. Do you want to roll perception? What guidance? Aye. Aye. Sorry. 17. 
uh, you don't see anything in the tunnel as you go forward, and you do see the very burned out um, spider's nest that you pass on your left with burned up eggs and cobweb everywhere. Lots of black soot um, from burning the dirt. I say we go check that way. Is there anything salvageable in there I can see, or is it all burnt out? It's all burnt out. Okay. And is there much past that way, or is it just like a little... It's just a little 10-foot elbow. Okay. So you guys head forward? Yeah. Um, we'll go down the the route that was bent. No, it's that's only really 10 foot. It's just like a little, little oh, alcove. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. You guys come up from your. Oh, that's wrong. Forty-five. I imagine so many bones in there anyway. You come up mm-hmm. from your alcove. I'm sorry. You come up from your tunnel on that big earthen hill in this really big room that is meant to look like. Um, a giant map of all of the mountains in the area. That's my mountain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, we didn't. We didn't go through that door up there. We did not. I'm gonna check it for traps. Okay, go ahead and roll. My foot was asleep, and now it feels like pretty static. Ah. Okay. Uh, fourteen. It is not trap. Okay, it's good to go. Ixidor, are you feeling good enough to take point, or should Kieran go in first? Fine for now. Okay. We'll see how long that keeps up, though. I'll take the dodge action, and then I'll uh, open the door. Okay. Alright. Gives me advantage on dexterity saves. A small room beyond the way. Beyond the door is a modest sized room with a lumpy pile of earthy material in the middle of the floor. Across from the door, in the corner, is a glazed flask that rests on a small shelf. In the. in the. Hold on. In that corner, and that corner... Top left. Yeah. Are two more shelves in which rest a small urn and a thin stone cylinder. Hmm. Do I want to use my last tech magic charge in here? No, I think we're fairly safe. Okay. Are you going to step forward and check out the treasures? I will. I'm going to take a look out for any traps in here. Kieran steps forward and the pile of earth starts to move. And it opens an eye at you. I'll jump backwards. And then it it rises up out of the ground. (laughs) Oh. Oh. It's It's rising and it's coming closer to you, inching. Oh, uh, kill it with fire. Mm. Kill it. Kill Monster it. Monster fight, roll initiative. I think that thing has an odd number of eyes. I think it's got an odd number of mouths. Well, I think it's just fucking odd. <laughs> <laughs> I got some natural 20. Nice. This, <laughs> this is your DM's favorite monster. <laughs> the absolute favorite monster. I was so glad to see him in this dungeon. I fucking <laughs> love these. Okay. Um, hold on. We need... Cool fight music. I saw uh, a video game that, like, featured one of these. It wasn't officially a, a one of these. It wasn't a gibbering mouth or it was a gapping talker. <laughs> <laughs> it had lots of eyes and teeth and ate people, I know that. Was it a Shogoth? I don't think so. I was going to say it looks like one. Okay. They have more chemicals, I think. Um, I know one of you got above a 20. I, I got some natural 20. So Kieran needs to go first. Uh, who got above a 15? I have exactly 15. Who got above a 10? I got 14. Okay. Kieran. Oh, do we need a map? Yeah, let's get you a map. There you go. That's close enough. And there's that. And then you guys are standing outside the door. And Kieran, you stepped forward, which is what alerted it. Eh. And where's Phlebotomus? There's Phlebotomus. And there's Blood Jr. Okay, I'll turn on the map. Oh, I'm sorry, who's my first? Kieran, what do you want to do? I'm going to circle around behind it. Okay. You come forward and slide around behind this thing. Careful not to step in the goop. Oh, it has, like, it has an effect on the ground around it, doesn't it? Sorry, I don't know anything about these things. Um, yep, 
Um, you notice as you step, it's like, and it's dough-like, difficult terrain. Um, Walking through jello. You don't have to do anything just yet. All right, I will ready an action to attack it for when, uh... Oh. Okay, just go ahead. Uh, I will ready an action to attack it for when, uh, Ixidor comes and attacks it as well. Okay. As you're walking in and you're getting closer to the... I need you to roll a wisdom saving throw. Well. And it gets louder and it hits your ears and hits your ears are ringing. All right, I get plus seven to that. And I get a 26. Okay. Um, nothing affects you other than the fact that it's just... It feels like the sound is bouncing off the walls and hitting you in the face. Um, you ready to attack? Anything else? Ah. Uh, that will be it. Okay, Ixeldor, it's your turn. I will move five feet into the room e. and attack it from there. Okay, I need you to roll a wisdom save. Okay. Fourteen. Okay, you also hear the sounds bouncing off the walls, but you are still able to go ahead and attack. Roll. And then I believe I get flanking from that, don't I? Yes. Okay. 28. It's a big, giant mass of red flesh. You're able to stab and oh. slash into it. Eight points of slashing damage. Okay. And four points of acid damage. Okay. Uh, you're able to cut in and you see the and it just makes some of the mouths that are close to it go and like try to actually meld away from the wound. And I will make my second attack against it. Okay. 25 to hit. Hits. 13 points of slashing damage and 6 points of acid damage. Okay, more acid gets sliced through it and it's like squeezing out of the way, um, kind of like a black cat firework that goes and it's trying to like get away from the acid burn but it is still up mm -hmm. um and my bonus action i will make a uh, an attack with the butt end of the halberd okay with a 22. yeah you okay with hitting the teeth does that make sense okay. just bust a few of them out Nine points of bludgeoning damage. You go right for a mouth and <laughs> and the teeth just all go <laughs> and hit the floor, um, the doughy like floor. You see it stick. Um, all right. Anything else you'd like that to do? That is turn? everything I can do. Okay. You see this thing? Like you can tell the eyes are wincing, the mouths are like you're, it, you did hurt it a great deal, but it is still up. That triggers my held action. Okay. I will now attack it with my shillelagh. Okay. Uh, 21 to hit. Alright. Uh, 11 points of bludgeoning damage. As okay. Well. Are you okay? Uh, I'm, I'm just going to like pancake it like I'm just getting it back down into the ground. The part that came swirling up, is that okay that you just squashed it like an yeah, accordion? Yeah, just slump it back. Mm -hmm. No, no, don't you move. And it made a weird, like, mm -hmm. sound when you did that. <laughs> a really weird game of whack-a-mole. Yeah. I kind of like this thing. Um, Phlebotomus, it's your turn. Mm, okay. It's sputtering at you. Please roll a wisdom save. Okay. You get plus four. I'm going to need it. Um... So that's going to be 15. Okay, you hear the audio coming out of the room and like filling the room you're in, but you're able to push past that sound wave and... I am um, going to cast Mouth's Acid Arrow. Ooh, okay. Um, so that's mm. going to be a wisdom... Not a wisdom attack. That's going to be a spell attack. Um, crap. Um, mm. How dexterous can this thing be? You yeah. guys are scooting farther and farther to the left every episode. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just sorry, I just noticed it was slowly coming off the camp. Okay. May I suggest, for the casting of this, you do like your cocktail, uh... Bartender? Bartender. Yeah, I have this little cocktail shake. <laughs> I'm shaking it all around, and I open up the cap, and let loose this big arrow ship burst of acid that snakes around Ixeldor and Kieran and aims towards the, whatever this thing is. Yeah! <laughs> the talking poop. 
<laughs> yeah, and it looks just like that. It leaves a trail, um, like a snake in the air. Is it? It's gonna be thirteen to hit. Hit. All right. The acid splashes across its front, um, hitting every appendage that was sneaking out. So that's gonna be forty-four acid damage immediately. And due to my alchemical savant feature, um, I gain a bonus to one roll that equals my intelligence modifier. Okay. Mm. So it's gonna be three six. Um five two. So nine fourteen. Sixteen acid damage. What do you wanna do this? So it snakes around um, and just pierces into the mouth and just forces itself down the thing's throat all into it, just filling it up with its acid. You see it bubbling like a pizza crust, like... <laughs> and then oh, it no. burns through it and... <laughs> oh. No, it pops gently because the acid like melts it away like sparks. Oh, thank goodness. And you see this... <laughs> as it comes down into a puddle. <laughs> <laughs> and that is my favorite monster. <laughs> it's okay, a good guy. There is now a puddle of gross all around it. So from outside the room, I'm gonna extend my ten foot pole. I'm gonna reach it through the doorway. Gonna pump, bump it past Ixeldor, and try and bump down at the creature and poke at it. Okay, you poke it. <laughs> poke it. Every poke makes noise. I'm just gonna keep doing that. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why are you asking? I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna just like prod it with my toes of my boot. <laughs> there was treasure. Yes. <laughs> what what is here? It? <laughs> this is the door. If you'd like to step forward on the difficult terrain. Yep. Oh, oh. These were nice boots. <sighs> Damn. Um, it's, it's weird. It's it's not mud, but it's it's got so much give. It's flesh. Because you started your turn in this area, you have to roll a strength saving throw to be able to walk through it. 17. You're able to walk through it because <laughs> your boots just pull right out of it like gum. Um, and you go to the items. You pick up um, a potion bottle looks to be dried out um, and a long stone cylinder. Is the potion invisible? Nice. There's something in the bottle. In the urn? Oh, in the bottle. Mm -hmm. uh, it just looks like a dried potion. Can I have that? Uh, yeah. I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna get my magic dagger. And I'm gonna start scraping the giver goop into the bottle. <laughs> into the bottle with the dried potion. Yes. Okay. C can we identify the potion before we? Oh, never mind. All right. Interesting. Okay, you have a potion bottle full of uh, body parts. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna cork it up and I'm gonna start shaking it. Roll a die 10,000, please. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> All right. You can see it starting to go, and you can see it getting more and more agitated as you go. Oh, this is good. I love this. <sighs> oh, jeez. There's too many things with the word net in it. Can I, can I guess? I'm going to guess. Yeah, go ahead and guess, guys. All right, I'll, I'll guess too. Um, I'm going to guess. Two thousand two hundred twenty-two. Your guess? One. Four thousand nine hundred seventy-six. Okay. All right, rolling. <laughs> five thousand five hundred fifty-five. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it came out to be. <laughs> I don't believe it. That's so good. That's not Shit! I chose the wrong number to repeat. I wonder what that one's gonna be. Bad. <laughs> you got <girl>, three bots. <laughs> Each one farts a different tune. <laughs> <laughs> they call you, you single butt what? trumpet. <laughs> And the room fills with like a vapor of like fluffy purple clouds. And you guys breathe it in and it soaks into you. And you all look sparkly and 
more handsome and more radiant than before, and... Well, this is pretty normal for me, actually. You each are kind of... I mean, Ixodor and Phlebotomus, you're kind of jealous that uh, Kieran gets to change his color whenever he wants, and his whole outfit and skin and hair, it all just matches so well, and he's so brave, and he's so um, comfortable just being himself. But Kieran and Phlebotomus, you're jealous of Ixodor for having a moral code and being disciplined. Uh, Am I really? No, just a little bit. You are. Uh, I mean. And then uh, Kieran and Ixodor, you're jealous of Phlebotomus for being creative and interesting. Um, always having new interesting things to say to yeah, people. Yeah, always full of himself. So you actually oh, are all himself. kind of extra fond of each other because of this. In fact, a little bit jealous of each other's good traits. Yeah. You know, you guys have positive traits, and I wish I had more positive traits. I wish you did, too. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, now I can make jokes. You're rubbing off <laughs> oh, on me. It hey, hey, hey. <laughs> was a joke, wasn't it? <laughs> it was. <laughs> good, uh -huh. good, good, good. <laughs> you oh. got me there. Okay, is there any goop left? Um... There's lots of goop left, but it is slowly being eaten away by the acid splash. How many bottles do I have? You have <laughs> well, you just exploded one of them. <laughs> the one less. The glass of the flash just like poof out the bottle. Mm -hmm. um, you that was the one we grabbed, so I should probably have at least one. Yeah, left. you should have an empty one. Alright, I'm gonna scrape the rest of the empty one. I'm not gonna shake it up. There is still an urn in the corner. I'll, I'll pick up the urn, sure. Why not? You probably open it? I'm already cursed. There's a dried heart inside of it. That's gross. Dare you to eat it. He dared you to eat it. He did. And, I mean, you're surrounded by two very brave people who are well, comfortable I, with doing fun things. Let me, let me, let me take a look at that heart. Tell all. Uh, fun, but stupid. You're slightly jealous of how, how, I, I'm how just, reckless they can be. But. I, I have a, uh, a scientific curiosity of the heart. How long has it been down here, and why is it dry? Should it be just eaten up and mush? Uh, have a look at it. Well, you know, take a look at it. I'll, I'll take a look. It seems very well preserved. I'm gonna poke it with my pole. I'm gonna make a nature check. I'm gonna nature. take a medicine check. Arcana check. 17. 16. 24. Okay, I'm gonna start with... What did you... What was yours? 16. No, what, what skill? Medicine. Uh, this is... I mean, this is a preserved heart that's been preserved for a very, very, very long time. Um, you're not seeing that it was soaked in poison or anything like that, and you're not seeing any cuts or lacerations on it. What species did it belong to? Something snake-like. Oh, um, that's, a, that's a very reptilian heart. All right. Phlebotomus, you know through um, artificery means this heart was preserved in a way that its natural magical essence is reusable. Mm -hmm. um, if someone were to eat it, they may gain the magical effects. Um, Ixeldor, this looks edible. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it was made for consumption. Eat it. What, eat what's it, it do, though? Eat it. Eat it. Eat it. Eat well, how about it? Can it be really? <laughs> you eat this big heart, and it's dry and tough. From being dehydrated, and you eventually get oh, it stuck down. in the teeth. All right, can I have a water. Oh, sure. Thank you. Yeah. Exodor. Exodor. Quite dry. You're not quite sure the effects just yet. Well, I'm probably dying anyway, so what does it matter? Yeah. What's yeah. one more poison? Hey, it didn't smell like formaldehyde, so that's a good thing. I'm pretty sure that was how. How was it? Was it just dried by natural means? No, it was dried by alchemical means to preserve the magical effects of the heart. So, what that means is... What type of creature would have a magical heart? Something reptilian? Maybe a dragon? You now have a dragon's heart. <laughs> in your stomach. In your stomach. But now your heart is going to be a dragon's heart. I, I, have can a only, I can only imagine what that will mean. Do we but. know what kind of properties it had? Uh, that it will bestow upon him. I might have been able to figure that out before you ate it. You told me to eat it. I told you not to. I'm glad you ate it. Well, it's been eaten. Ixeldor is so brave and strong for <laughs> eating that heart for all of you. Ixeldor, that was pretty badass. <laughs> I'm kind of jealous. I mean, it, was, it was just a dried heart. 
I'm jealous of you. I mean, I'm pretty sure in short that this is a delicacy. I have a question. I have an answer. Phlebotomus, could you perhaps scrape off the inside of that urn? Maybe study what chemicals were used, recreate the process? Mm, yes. Oh, interesting. I'm going to see if I can do that with, would that be Arcana? Our Fisher's tools? You, no, alchemist use, tools. I, you would use your alchemist tools from the bag, okay. so you would have to expend a charge to now open the alchemist tools. Well, for me. So, two chargers, um, one for the stone cutting earlier and one for the alchemical stuff now. Right. Okay. And I am proficient in alchemical, I believe. Yes, you uh, absolutely you are. are. So you're going to get a triple proficiency. <laughs> you, you better be alchemist. <laughs> don't forget your int bonus. That's a plus 13 to this roll. Oh. 24. Okay. Um, the interesting thing is you don't find any remnants, but that gives you a clue. Whatever it was, was a mixture that was meant to remove itself. It was a mixture that was meant to fill the air, drain any water from the material, preserve it, and then just leave a perfect vacuum of, um, of safe air that wouldn't further deteriorate the heart. Okay. So you have an idea of what would do that. That's pretty cool. Okay. So I should be able to replicate that. Mm-hmm. 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 Very cool. Let's keep that urn. It's airtight. Put it, put it in my bag of holding. Better idea, because then it won't break in the hole. Mm-hmm. Okay. You guys ready to move on? Yes. Okay. I. So, you know that if you leave this room <laughs> to the lower doors, you're going to end up in a big hallway again, where the fake gold pile is. So do you guys just open the doors? Well, let's take a listen. There could be something behind us, like a giant spider that we scared off. Of course, that spider's probably up in the corners of the room here, but... Oh, I'll it's take a listen. I'll take a listen. more scared of us than we are of it. Remember that. That's true. Very good point. I got a 14 on my perception check. So in the room you're currently in, in the down left corner, up in the very top, is a little spider totally, well it's a big spider, giant spider, with its legs curled up in front of it, and it's just waiting for you to pass. Uh, DM, question. Yes. Am I jealous of this spider's positive features? No. <laughs> okay. You guys don't only seem to be jealous of each other. Okay, but not as a magical thing then. Am I jealous of its positive features as a me thing? Well, that would be de- determined by you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, guys, I'm pretty jealous of that spider's positive features. And what positive feature does the spider have? It can have? make rope with its butt. I wish I could do that. That's pretty positive. Well, you can make web. But for my butt, no. If you work hard enough, I'm sure you can do a little alchemy thing. I thingy. feel like I might try to do that, but I would end up just shitting myself. I feel like you would too. Would that be really such a bad thing? I like having clean underwear. Take your underwear off? <laughs> Just take your pants off. Um, I'm gonna table that for now. <laughs> Alright. Table it. The term that you learned today? <laughs> okay. Well, it seems harmless. You guys are just gonna leave it? Uh, Spider, would you like to come with us? Adventure and death awaits. No reaction. Ixeldor, mm-hmm. could you speak to this creature? Um, I suppose. I will use my armor's ability to cast Speak with Animals. Yes, you will! Okay. Your armor can do that. Fuck you guys! I wanted to come up with another damn voice. (laughs) Okay, so the spider in the corner, what do you say to it? Uh, tell it what I said. Hail, webbed friend. How art thou today? You have a charisma of 18, and that's how you're talking to things. <laughs> <laughs> My home was burned. I am scared of the fire you bring. That's it? This <laughs> <laughs> is very disarming. <laughs> I'm looking for a new home as well. How about you come with us and we can find new homes together? <laughs> Roll persuasion? Uh, guidance. Animal handling. Guidance. I'll assist you with, with animal handling. Okay. 
since I'm proficient in that. And guidance? Yes. 21. <laughs> With no bonus. <laughs> What, what is coming with you? Following us. We will find you a new place to make your home. I follow. I just I just walk behind you. Watch our backs for incoming danger would be nice. And in turn, we shall protect you. And feed it. And feed you. You feed me? We feed you. What do I do if I see danger? What, what did it say? Uh, it wants to know... Well, it's going to come with us, hopefully. Oh. But, and I have asked it to scout for danger, but what shall it do to alert us of danger? What do spiders do to alert people of danger? Oh, as I, I'd, I'd imagine something that large can hiss, and if it sees danger, uh, tell it to keep its distance and shoot webs or venom. That. I will tell it to do that. Can I eat the little one? No, you cannot eat the little one, unfortunately. He is a friend, not a foe. What's, and, what's going on? And the yellow one? The yellow one is also a friend. And no, you cannot eat the other little yellow and black ones that are following. That one stinks. I don't want it near me. What's 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 it saying? Um, it wants to eat people. Well, yeah, I'll just. I just want just to know what my food is. Here, give it to Betty. Uh, here, come come down here, and I shall give you food. Also, uh, here's a Betty for you. Yay. It's much for you. Thank and you. And it extends Home. its big, long, mouthy thing, and you see all the weird parts of its mouth. And there you are. Oh, that's adorable. I, I, I am full. I have. This is. Yes. You will do this for me every day. Every day. I, I will follow you. Fuck it. I can't believe you guys just. <laughs> <laughs> It's just a giant spider. We all have I to be, have a pet. That's fine. Will <laughs> I be safe? When you are with us, we will keep you as safe as possible. No fire. No fire. Not toward you. No, whatever th- that dripping is. She's, she points <laughs> at Blood Junior. <laughs> I will inform my companion to stay as far away from you as <laughs> possible. <laughs> Blood Baltimore. Yes. Please keep um, Blood Junior away from uh, legged friend. <laughs> oh, they, that's he frightens them. That's no problem. Uh, Blood Junior, I beseech thee. <laughs> <laughs> Float, flutter away from that creature. No, no, away, <laughs> away. <laughs> so you've got Blood Junior kind of in the opposite direction, and the spider follows behind. I don't. Walk much will we rest sometimes? Of course we will rest sometimes. Okay. What is your name? Sylvandis. Okay. Important NPCs. <laughs> Important <laughs> NPC collectors. Can you, can you spell that for me? Sylvandis. S-E-L-A-N-D-I-S. Is that feminine or masculine? Feminine. It's spider. <laughs> Fem spider. Now, are we talking like large spider, medium spider? Giant spider, Giant large beast. Large beast. It, oh. is, it is a... a but that's with its legs fully outstretched. It can fit through doorways. What is the body like? What, four feet long? or Probably, Probably the size of this table, so six feet so long and three feet wide. Important question. <laughs> <laughs> important question. Important question. Um, so I'm small. And the spider is large. Mm-hmm. Can you ride the spider? <laughs> Can I ride the spider? You could, but she's not. She's not. She's yet. not really a. She's fragile and. Okay, she's not really a. I mean, spider. holding like 40, 50 pounds is a lot of weight for something that's okay. made out of exoskeleton and. Yeah, wood. that's fair. I won't. Um, if it were a tarantula, probably, but an orb weaver, probably not. I mean, she can carry you, but not for long distances, and she already expressed no interest in really traveling a lot. Um, she. I think we know what a giant spider looks like. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't look like she loves. She looks pink and fleshy, and she's got the fangies. Fleshy? Well, I think she That's looks. weird. It is pink. Maybe it's young. She's not furry. Like, you could touch her, and it would oh. feel like extra. I will give her a pat on the head. I pet the spider. She's like, I, 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 I. 
What? What are you doing? <laughs> it is. It is a show of companionship. Attacking me? No, not not attacking you. No. What's we are it? friends now. I don't think it likes being pet. I'm gonna pet Ixeldor to show what it works. I'll pet Ixeldor as well. What are friends? Things that don't kill each other? People you care about. Like babies. Kind of. Okay, like babies. <laughs> okay. It's bigger than we are, so sure. <laughs> We're your babies, don't eat us! The only thing I don't kill are things that can kill me or my babies. And we, in turn, shall not kill you and kill things that try to kill you. Thank you. I will follow for food tomorrow. And she's like, and she's big. She's like, you guys are standing there and her head is level with your head and she's like, yeah, suspended by her legs now that she's not curled up anymore. She could probably hang on the other side of our mechanical spider. Oh god. Spiderception. <laughs> this is amazing. Oh we, we don't have the crossbow to the sea heart of a giant spider? It's a one half? It's one. It's one? Okay, okay that's pretty powerful. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty fucking cool. I can't believe you did that. <laughs> okay. Onward, Onward and forward. It'd be neat if I made her useful. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you guys leave this big room, and you have a big hallway in front of you. Uh, you guys came, obviously, from that other hallway. Um, let me actually look in this, at the map. I can probably put her away. Anything else you want to do in this room? You can still... How long does to Speak With Animals? An hour? I or didn't I say you could cast it at will with that armor on? I don't remember. Uh, I think I can cast it a number of times equal to the armor bonus. Yes, you can. So how long does it last? Speak with animals. Lasts for ten minutes. That's pretty long. So you've got some time. Mm -hmm. Um. I will. I will spend uh, the travel time talking with Salandas to try to gather any sort of information that we may not have already received. Anything about this place? Anything about the dragon that lives here? How long it's been here? If it knows the locations of possible other pillars of the mythal. Okay. Uh, that's a lot of things. <laughs> I we have ten minutes. I didn't absorb all those. Okay. So let's okay. start with things about this area. Okay. There are. Sorry, I just realized we should end the episode. Anyway, oh. there are. There are inedible things that crawl through my tunnel. I don't eat them. Um, I venture out to hunt for small rats and things to eat. I leave webs to catch things to eat, but the inedible things go by. The water one, she wets the ground as she walks. Oh, we killed her. Yes. She's no more. Oh. Um, that's all I ever see come through. I have... I have seen more rooms on this area, but I don't know how to enter them. So does she eat those beetles we found? She could if she could get if she could suffocate them somehow and then get through the through the carapace. Oh, I forgot that we have more friends waiting for us. Um, what were the other questions you asked her? Um, would she know of any location that may match like a pillar of the mythal? A strange place. Mm -hmm. That's a really weird thing for a spider to know, and her wisdom is very low. Um, what what do you mean, pillar, mythal? It's a big wiggly, magicy thing, like sparkly and weird. Um, I will describe the weird tree that we encountered and see if she's seen anything that resembles this or something that may be similar. The black tree, both or both. Um, not that one. The weird-looking tree the in the pool of water, the coral thing. Well, we, we asked about the white one. She said, oh, yeah, yeah, I've seen the black one up above. Oh. Yeah. Um, big things. Oh, there was a big four-legged unedible thing on the surface. Um, rats everywhere, bats everywhere. I stay under the ground so the bats do not eat me. Big, big bats are able, 
There's bats that are big enough to eat you. Uh, I don't know what bats eat. They break through my webs. I don't bother hunting them. Otherwise, I do not know. They're like those bats we mm-hmm. fought when we fought Agatha. I'd imagine there'd be more of them. I, I forgot about that. Any other questions for her? Um, I, I feel like she might not have too good of a grasp of no. things we can form. I don't think we can Ask get her about her combat capabilities. Are you able to fight should you be a, or should you find yourself in need to do so? I prefer not to use my energy. Being injured and healing could possibly kill me, prevent me from hunting, prevent me from protecting myself, so I avoid fights as best as I can. I can bite and I can shoot web. I can climb. Uh, that's about it. Should I request you to, could you shoot your web to slow down our enemies and help us protect you better? Yes, that okay. is a good defense that I like to use. Doesn't can I work get, against fire. Can I get like a, an idea about what her web does? Oh yeah, just take the book. Oh, maybe you can um, you can arrange for some kind of signaling. We train it. Safe web attack, five feet, thirty or sixty. Target is restrained by webbing as an action. The restraint can make a DC twelve strength check to bust out. It's not. It's a low the DC. Strongest, but it it's a um, low DC or it's a low low CR monster. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I will spend whatever remaining time I have with speak with animals, trying to come up with some sort of signal for the web. That's about it. Okay. Yeah. Because I won't be able to communicate with her forever. So. <laughs> when she sees your arm go like this, mm-hmm. she knows to shoot it over you. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. And she knows to hiss if she sees enemies. She has blind sight too. For oh, ten feet. Goodness. Dark vision for sixty feet. So I will instruct her to keep hidden but keep her eye on us. Okay. Alright, so follow it to distance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's like following that. distance. Okay. okay. And wait. she can keep you within her sight. Her eyes blinking. Mm-hmm. Not that they blink, but in the They don't blink. It would be so cute if she had big long eyelashes and they went blink blink. <laughs> um okay. Where are you guys going? Uh, on break? Yes. Oh my gosh! Oh. <laughs> anyway, sorry. That was a long episode. Um, we're back in the dungeon! Of course, making up more NPC voices! Thanks guys! No, I'm just kidding. That one was fun. Um, gosh, you guys have a weird NPC collection. <laughs> yeah, they can't catch them all. <laughs> I mean, this is literally a Pokemon we just got. Oh my god. Digimon, digital monsters, <laughs> Digimon are the champions! Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> what is what? digital, Kieran? It's fingerly. Fingerly. D- digit? Oh, digits, I see. Right. Fingerly it's monsters. Elvish. You can only have a maximum of eight because your thumbs are not technically fingers. The phalanges. My thumbs are fingers. <sighs> but they are digits. They're just phalanges. We'll see you next time. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for joining us on Downstairs and Dragons. We will see you next time.